Okay. Good evening. I'd like to call the meeting to order and welcome you to the regular meeting of the Milwaukee Planning Commission. Agendas and additional copies of staff reports are available on the table in the hall. If you have not picked up an agenda, please do so. It contains important information about the process. If you wish to be included in the mailing list for a decision, please add your name and contact information to the sign-up list located on the table in the hallway. If you wish to testify, please also fill out a yellow comment card, but there's no hearing tonight. Um, so next on the agenda is the approval of minutes from the February 27th, 2018 meeting. Does anyone have any corrections to make? No. 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 Okay. No. And I will entertain a motion to approve the notes as presented. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the meeting minutes from February 27th, 2018. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The, the notes are approved. Informational items. Are there any informational items from staff? I've got just a couple. Um, at the last last Tuesday, the council um, approved the Block One Comprehensive Plan policies and also approved the North Milwaukee Innovation Area Plan and Code Amendments. God. Thank you, Vera. <laughs> so uh, was the only change innovation? There were, uh, in there were a couple of other small changes. Did they it, were minor tweaks. So did the southwest corner remain? The southwest, the southwest corner is not residential. Mm -hmm. Does not allow any residential no, at all? No, no the, the mixed use overlay did not get carried forward. So okay. it is just and the they, employment zone. And they talked about it a lot. So, um, But live, work, is is available in that in those zones, right? Live work is available up in the old, um, yeah. up near the up near the, the transit st okay, uh, station. station right. Right. Okay, but right. it's not available down on that okay. south right. um, west corner. I think that we had. I think the council we discussed that overlay. I think it was three entire hearings. Yeah, that were focused fairly exclusively on that issue so there was a lot of discussion about it perhaps at the expense of talking about other parts of the code mm -hmm. but anyway it was a it was a long haul um they hadn't worked on it since april and for i mean they had they've had a lot of things going on since then and so um there was nothing that was time sensitive here, so it was easy to continue it a couple times. So that's what happened. It, uh, yeah. So we're 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 glad that it's finally yes. done. Um, now we'll just see what mm -hmm. if it m makes much difference in terms of development. It does. It does allow um, you know office use everywhere. It makes a distinction in the types of office use, but it, but it allows that employment-focused uh, production office everywhere. It, um, it does set up some uh, um, requirements for certain types of improvements, street improvements in lo different locations. Um, but those are some of the right the big the big things. Yep. And the the code um, we have it's 60 days till it's effective, so that we have time to incorporated into the code and so on. So we've got a little bit of time to get that right. But hopefully it's, oh, I, I'm, we're hoping that it at least provides some more opportunities for folks to do some more investment or redevelopment or something on their property. So yeah, mm -hmm. we'll see. Yeah. Um, the last thing is I, I sent out a reminder today about the um, training sessions that are available on the 12th or 13th if you uh, wanted to do the, the full day version on the 13th or the evening version on the 12th. Um, the evening one's focused on planning commissioners. The, um, the daytime one is planners in general, but you're certainly welcome to attend that too. So. Um, if uh, I think Sherry, you've all, you've responded, I believe, to um, Alicia and me. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, the two of us so yeah. far. I think, yeah. And I and I think all I think Alma oh. Alma and Valeria, the housing specialist, are both going. 
to the, uh, to the, uh, the daytime session. And yesterday I got drafted into moderating a, the session on housing oh. on the daytime session. So, Well, that changes my mind. I'm going to go now. No, <laughs> I, I'll tell you why. I, part of the reason why I volunteered is so that I can ask the questions that I want to have answered. Mm. Mm. And that's, that's the that's uh, control thing. That's I got the, it. the best thing about being a moderator at sessions like that. So. Fun. Um, uh, yeah, so that's the... Uh, that's what's going on. Okay. Um, oh, and I, one more thing um, regarding our, our comp plan process. Um, we have been spending quite a bit of time in the last uh, two weeks trying to, trying to think about um, how to focus more on the housing element. And so we're actually going to be separating the housing element from the other pieces that are in block two and at least kind of um, so we're going to start block two on all of the other topics and bring housing back into it as its own topic probably in November okay. um, we are um, trying to capture uh, put a larger emphasis on equity and the equity focus of, um, and uh, if you, um, um, Councillor uh, Faulkner wrote a really good um, uh, sec, um, column on, uh, on equity in the um, pilot. So if you pick up August pilot on your way out the door, and maybe it's online by now, I don't know, it wasn't online a week ago. Um, and it, it uh, I think what we're going to be exploring are some of the ideas that she's talked about there in that in that session or in that in that column. So council had a discussion on that. Um, well, we talked about it last time, two weeks ago. That's right. right. And um, but our sort of follow up was not to accelerate housing, but to delay it because we need to we need to be very um, thoughtful about how we pose some of the questions. And when's the next meeting? The, 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 September 10th. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was afraid. It's the same day as the meet. I saw you posted the meeting. Yeah, and, and because I thought we were going to be talking about the housing, the, because I really want to be in on the uh, uh, ecology part of it. Okay. But well, that's okay. We'll we've, get an you'll still get a chance. We're just um, we want to be um, we want to be a little more thoughtful about how we launch. And, and what are the? It's ecology or uh, it's other, environment or whatever. The other you call ones it. were it was uh, climate and um, uh, energy, um, the greenway uh, hazards, and. Not natural resources, not public facilities. It was ecology or something like that, right? Or, oh. but but it's different than climate. Climate and energy, we're together. We're together, and with the and and then we've got hazards and the greenway with uh, greenway. And ha I'm uh, blanking. I'm sorry. I'm blanking uh, too. I'll think of it in the middle of um, Vera's presentation. Anyway, it's some the how we treat our land. Right. The natural hazards part is definitely about how we treat our land. The, um, but I, natural resources is in block um, three. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, parks and rec. That's what's. In oh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So if natural resources is in part three, then I think that's the one that I really want to hammer on. Yeah. So I mean, there's plenty to talk about in the topics that we have. So I'm not worried about that. Sorry, I'd forgotten you guys had talked about that right after the the council had talked about it. We've had subsequent conversations, though. That's part of my my brain freeze here. Okay. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we'll, we don't have any audience participation, so we'll skip that. Um, we are not having a hearing tonight, so we'll go right to work session items. The room service code amendments. Uh, thank you, um, commissioners. I'm going to 
just present from here. Okay. Because it's really intended to be more of a discussion and kind of a question and clarification um, opportunity. Uh, this is the first um, work session and a briefing on the next round of code amendments. The first round was housekeeping. Um, some of these um, in this package are housekeeping in nature and are kind of edits or little tweaks. And some of them have a little more to do with policy. So we up the game and we're calling it room service, um, sort of keeping with the theme of lodging. Um, anyway, we'll see what round three looks like. Um, but what are uh, your pet names for round three? Right. Well, it's really round 1.5 if we yeah. accelerate one. Um, so it's continental breakfast. So we'll see. I mean, we're, you know, we have, there's a litany that we can be using <laughs> sure. here. And I'm wondering if anyone thinks it's as funny as Brett and I do. <laughs> but um, anyway, <laughs> it makes it, it makes it a little more fun, I guess. Um, we've had uh, two work sessions with council um, on this round. Um, we actually added a couple of things, but you have, um, the version that you have um, has sort of the complete package. We've sort of been adding things um, a couple of times um, with the council list, but these are the full ones. Um, I just wanted to identify a couple of the items that the council talked about, particularly in and brought up, um, and then um, happy to open it up to if you had any questions or clarifications that um, I can provide for you, um, so that we can tweak these things. And the um, the idea is to get a complete package ready, and we'd be going to public hearing um, probably in the well with the notices and so on, probably in the middle of October, I think, by the time we get all the notices and so on out. And we have a couple of things that we still need to refine a bit more. Um, and on that topic specifically, the um, the new code section for the green building standards, the incentives, um, there's two parts to wanting to do that. One is was to create a new section that points whatever sections of the code need to go to um, that will have um, an incentive for green buildings. Um, the NMIA has an incentive for green buildings for additional floors. Uh, the downtown does, as well as the central Milwaukee, um, the general mixed use zone. And rather than have the same green building language in all of these sections, so, so that if we ever wanted to change it, we'd have to change it in multiple sections, it seemed to make sense to create one section and point everybody to that. And that's uh, the section 510, uh, the new section for green building. So there, so the first part of wanting to create that was creating a new section, but the more important part um, is actually creating the language for that incentive. Um, We've only had one project take advantage of that green building incentive. It's the Axle Tree um, mixed use project. They use the green globes uh, certification to um, to earn an additional floor. Um, and there's been some discussion that perhaps our language and the um, the programs that we've selected as part of that green building incentive, or the that we haven't really we've sort of included some, but we didn't really specify what level um, people needed to be in. Um, that maybe these programs aren't rigorous enough and we ought to take another look at how we've written um, what that incentive ought to look like. We still have a little more research. The language that you have in here um, is still in a draft form and it will likely look differently when we come back to you um, for the public hearing. We've been tossing around a couple of ideas about how to approach that. What's the right program? Should we be talking about levels? Um, what we're um, kind of trying to figure out is how do we write this so that staff, any one of us planners, isn't the certifier of whether or not they're complying with the program um, because we're not lead certified and you know and there's so many different programs so what we're trying to understand is there a way to write this incentive so that there is a program that certain does the certification so that staff isn't the one trying to figure that out um, so there's um, but we also want to make sure that we're writing a, an incentive that is in fact an incentive and doesn't discourage um, investment or in, in development in the in any of our of the zones either so there's a balancing act of trying to get re achieve that sustainability um, as well as have a market reality um, in what that incentives are so it's a little, yeah. a little tricky because um, of the building code requirements um, right. this is something that has to have to be incentive based it has to somebody has to um, want to take advantage of this to get something out of the code right. we can't um, go be above and beyond uh, current energy code at the state level without offering something 
So we can't just require everyone to build a lead gold building in, right. in the city. Mm -hmm. It has to be because you want that extra floor. There has to be the mm -hmm. incentive. We can't exceed the building code requirements um, as part of the base code kind of thing. Yeah. So, so it sounded like you were starting to tell us the things that council is interested in in this list and, th and that's, that's jumped one out as one yeah. of them. Yes. Um, yeah. And I guess as you're going through your list and talking more about this, one of the things that I was wondering about it, um, and when I look at these kind of updates is, you know, whether or not it's, it's consistent with other cities, mm. you know, in Metro or elsewhere and, right. you know, what other cities maybe you looked mm. at when you were doing these updates. So um, if, if, it, if you have that information, if you could add that in as well as you're talking through this, that'd be helpful for me. Definitely. And I wonder if maybe you might, um, with the housing roundtable that recently I think just started, if you might just run it by them, because those are people with kind of boots on the ground developing stuff that has more experience in the green building programs that kind of have been through those before and kind of know what the levels are and what's achievable and what mm -hmm. is um, realistic in terms of what you write in um, just so that you're not making it too prescriptive. Right. Yeah. We had um, hoped to do um, some follow-up with developers to get some, in That'd be great. some yeah. direct input on what, whatever we come up with. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Alma Flores and Leila Amon are working with us on this as well as the city manager's office to try and craft language that is workable and gets gets us what we want from that energy efficiency sustainability piece as well so yes but excellent points thank you we'll definitely do that okay um quickly just um the uh number of chickens allowed um in the residential zones the current code allows um, up to 50 um, domesticated fowl um uh the when we were looking at and in, when we were talking about wanting to revise that and thinking about 50 being would appear to be an excessive number in a residential zone. I happened to receive two phone calls the same day from neighbors um, of a particular property that has a lot of chickens. I don't think they have 50, um, but they were complaining and couldn't believe that the city was allowing 50. Mm -hmm. um, and she had said, I mean, the county only allows six. That seems reasonable to me. So I went to the county's code just to see you know, what the county allows in urbanized areas. And the number was intended to be a starting point and, it, and a place of, okay, six, Portland allows four. So it was kind of um, a starting point. The, the council had um, a lot of comment about that um, and they are recommending 20 um, as the number, not 50, but also not six, um, based on if you're trying to have you know, eggs for your family. Um, not all of your chickens are laying at the same time. You know, so there was kind of this idea of sort of a churning of who's, which chickens are laying and which ones aren't. So 20 seemed to be the right number to be able to maximize egg production for a family. So that's the number that they had recommended. Um, happy to and hear if you They did discuss comments. roosters, right? Because aren't roosters generally the cause of most of the complaints? Mm. They weren't the complaints that I received. So uh, more about the rodent population yeah, right. and that kind of stuff that exactly. goes along with yep. chicken yep. poo and right. domesticated animals. Yeah. So I included a couple of, um, and there's some sections here that are highlighted just as just a way of, I pulled some language from the county that talks about, you know, how, you know, that they're kept in, you know, hygienic conditions and the food is kept in a closed container. I mean, you know, from an enforcement standpoint, it's just something that's, you know, we thought maybe it would be helpful to add some language about so well. the way this is written, can I have 20 chickens and two roosters? We don't have anything about roosters, so we probably will want to talk thought, about that. I thought we had fowl. It's fowl. Well, and or domesticated fowl. I think but, it's right. be 18. It's a total of 20. Right. A total of 20 all together. Yes. Yeah. So I could have 10 ducks, 8 chickens, right. and 2 ostriches. <laughs> yeah. Right? Are fun. ostriches fowl? Yeah, they're birds. Okay. <laughs> Or two yes. geese, or two geese. Right. right. Any combination thereof. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's, bad. Mm -mm. That's the intent. Uh, th does this requirement have a lot size limit? Or no. no? These, yeah. This one does not because it's not considered an agricultural yeah. use. So some of the others have lot size limits, right. but this yeah. doesn't. Yeah. This is considered an accessory use on in residential zones. I, it so. might be worth more thought as we get into this. But, right. Um, but. 
Well, and that's why I asked, you know, I think it was very, it's very helpful that you put the Clackamas County information on here, right. but, and to know that the city of Portland allows four. Right. Okay. So, you know, it, maybe some other comparison sure. cities mm -hmm. I think would be helpful. Yep. Um, if there are cities that allow 20, you know, that would be interesting to know um, as well. Right? Just to, right. Okay. I can't wait to post this on to the Oregon Planners Network. Yeah. It's an ongoing uh, network of planners that have uh, like discussions a list, a list online serve. about yeah. code requirements and what people require. So. It saves a lot of time from reading everyone's code. You yeah. just throw it out there into the list server. Chicken and code. See, but yeah. Foul right. code. Sorry. Yeah. Domesticated foul. Domesticated yes. foul code. Right. Got it. Um, the, regarding the um, proposed um, language for odor control standards for marijuana businesses, um, we need to revise the code um, because we are exceeding the building code for the prescriptive mechanical standards that we've put into the code. So we're trying to simplify that. Um, and there's a couple of other um, statements in there about kind of just how to define odor as a nuisance. And I pulled that and I will write down, I will make sure I, I know where I'm finding this language, but I think that was from Colorado. But um, the, uh, the Lisa, Councilor Beatty, um, would rather that we have a much more robust discussion about noise and odor and basically sort of nuisance, our nuisance code uh, standards. So um, she'd rather that we sort of focus on just what language we need to fix based on the building code and let's talk about the other things in a bigger discussion, um, a bigger nuisance. And, and discussion. one of the things that you may find is somebody may pass a bill here in the next couple of days that allows marijuana to be smoked in uh, like, a, like in a marijuana bar Hmm. Um, and okay. uh, so there might be that kind of too. And if right. it doesn't get, it's going to be pushed onto the floor, I think, is what they're saying. And that uh, if it doesn't, then they're going to try to get it on the ballot. Okay. So just to kind of give you that as well, how do you contain that inside a, right. you know, a restaurant or a bar or whatever yeah. you want to call it? Well, where we might end up with our code amendment, though, is to just pull this section out of the code and then deal with the issue through the outside of the land use process in the nuisance section of the of the right. municipal code. Oh, yeah. So it would beat up. It would isolate it from from land use, which might be easier mm -hmm. anyway. It's complicated. The a lot of particularly odor and nuisance language tends to talk about, you know, what does the regular person perceive as being, you know, it's, 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 it's very difficult. I have not found really good code that kind of feels scientific somehow. Um, and it all feels like, well, if someone doesn't like bread, they're not going to like a bakery. I mean, it, you know, we're all sort of assuming we all agree on what we think is a foul odor and that may not be true. <laughs> so it's, it makes it a little difficult. So it'd be better to, I think, put it, outside of the zoning code there, as there well. was yeah. there was discussion at the council about these odor meters that apparently somebody produces but again somebody's got to um, monitor it and set the right. baseline about what's acceptable and what right. isn't. I don't, yeah. don't know how those work. So more either. to come on this one. Yeah. But what you'll probably see in our draft is just striking out the section on on our regulating odor. Yeah. Um, the landscaping standard and the multifamily development standards, there was a, I think I highlighted that in your section of the code. Um, Councillor Beatty brought up the question uh, regarding the what we are proposing is to not require native trees to be um, in the planting plan, just that they would not be nuisance, listed in, as a nuisance tree. Um, depending on what your site plan looks like, native trees don't always provide the best flexibility for sizing um, in where they're being um, planted. And so the proposal was to provide some more flexibility for a landscape architect to be able to, to create a planting list. Um, but the tree board um, is not supportive necessarily of wanting to not require native trees, but the mayor has brought up some commentary about with climate change, native trees may not be the right mix either. So more to come on that one as well. And, and again, why this is an issue is, um, for multifamily development, we have 
um, a clear and objective path and a discretionary path. And if one wants to follow the clear and objective path and not be drawn into the potential for a hearing, they need to plant native trees. And in this, this came up for Northwest Housing's application because they were, the multifamily portion of that, they were trying to not be in a situation where they might be appealed. So they were going with the, the clear and objective path. Their setbacks are fairly shallow between the, how, the, between the building and the adjoining property line, but they need to put screening in to do the, the upper floor bedrooms need to be screened from the adjoining residential property. So they were gonna plant trees in this setback area. And all the natives have basically, they're too big. They're, they, they're not columnar, they, so it makes it and, difficult. And yeah. so we have this conflict right there. So they've, their approved plans approve trees that at some point are gonna be a problem. And um, so we felt it necessary to at least raise this issue and, and bring it up and have a discussion about it. As I understand it, that wasn't completely explained to the tree board when they reviewed this. And so there may be still another opportunity to get input from the tree board about that issue. I will just quickly add something to um, hypothetically, some species of trees don't um, transplant or transfer as well as other species. And um, so that could be an issue as well. You want to plant stuff that will thrive and not be maintenance heavy down the road. So. I mean, at the end of the day, the goal is to have an urban tree canopy that, you know, that we want. And right. so we want things to obviously survive and thrive. And, yeah. And yeah. You, so part of this is you could go through a discretionary process to get an alternative to the native tree, but we also don't want to force everybody into a discretionary process when there ought to be some yeah. logical solution that, that um, provides that uh, clear and objective alternative. Um, quickly, the um, banners and temporary signs, um, specifically um, language that, so we, we're sort of doing a couple of different things, that we um, would disallow banners as being your permanent sign for your business. They're intended to be temporary signs. Um, and that had come up, we had gotten some complaints from folks that had used banners as their permanent sign. And it just, you know, from an aesthetic standpoint, um, they're really intended to be a temporary type of sign. And to that, um, there was some, our current code exempts temporary signs from needing a sign permit, but the code does not specify a time frame by which they need to be removed. I mean, they're intended to be a temporary event, temporary something, but we don't talk about how long that actually is. So um, it's difficult to enforce something. I think we say they should be removed in a reasonable amount of time. Well, that everyone has a different definition of that. So we're trying, so a, what we're talking about is a, is a three month you know, time limit for those temporary signs. Um, I think a couple of the counselors thought that that might, maybe that's too short and maybe it could be six months. So, um, so just highlighting that, that um, that number is something that will, I'll take another look at some more sign codes and see how folk, other communities are treating so that, let, what let, that time frame is. Right, and because, so Spirit Halloween just popped up at, right? right? And so, depends on how you count months. Right. But it's August, September, and then it'll be October, and they probably won't take it down until November. Right. Right. So, I mean, that's four months right there. Right. Unless if you start the count from the first day of complaint, right? Because how are you going to know the exact date that it got popped well, Right. Because yeah. since they don't need a permit, right. you know, we won't know exactly so, when they're So, yeah, I would say extending that. I mean, just from the example of Spirit Halloween, yeah. three months is probably too short. Right. No. Isn't it a little early for Halloween stuff? <laughs> yes, it is. But they're advertising. They're advertising that Spirit Halloween is going to be in there. Fred Meyer too, so that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, and I had to say, uh, so if it was Christmas, is it too early? <laughs> <laughs> it comes earlier and earlier every year. Um, it's probably out early. So I, I'd kind of like to see what a definition of a banner is, and so. Is a banner a plastic sign that's held on to a wall by strings? They don't have to be by strings. They can actually be attached. 
I mean, they can be. I mean, and so does wall, this but... also include if the, um, let's say, ODOT allowed banners to be stretched across the street for a f uh, festival or right, something, right. That, right? I mean, does that include those then as well? Well, that would be considered a banner, but those wouldn't be necessarily up all the time, though, either. This is intended for a business that... I, I get it, know. I get it, but I, but I mean, I'm just thinking, right, a, a definition of banner... Uh, because I don't know, another temporary sign would be like a for sale sign or a mm -hmm. um, Yard sale garage sign. sale, sure. right? Yep. I mean, I think things. that's the idea yes. that a temporary sign is supposed to be. Right. And so some people may not think that something that is 8 foot long or 12 foot long and mm -hmm. 4 foot tall is to them considered temporary. So that's right. why I would say, you know what, a definition of a banner which could be made of cloth, paper, or a plastic that is temporarily attached to a building that would blow in the wind. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, I, I don't know what the real definition of a banner is, but... but well, I'm sure there's, there's a zillion sign codes out there. There's well, probably examples of... We have a definition of, of a banner sign we go. in the code, and it will need to be... Um, it will have to be revised. I'm glad I noticed this. Thank you for bringing this up. Um, because right now we define it as a sign of lightweight fabric or similar material that can be mounted both on a permanent or temporary basis. So if our intent is to not have banners be permanent signs, we'll have to edit the definition to make sure that it, it stays within the temporary um, idea. I hadn't even looked at that. So thank you for bringing that up. Okay. But well, we could be a little more specific. About yes, it, yeah. absolutely. Because they're and typically it, vinyl. They're actually not. Right now they are. Fabric, yeah, right. Yeah. This is for businesses currently operating, not like for construction sites that have vinyl banners noting like the who the partners are. Right. No. Okay. That's. Those are, those are intended to be right temporary. That's different. Um, okay. It's the idea of you know I have a restaurant in downtown. Right. I'm not going to be using a banner as my sign. Right. You know, okay. Those are often up longer than... Mm -hmm. Right, for construction. Six months, yeah. Though, yeah. So might want to 18 to that. 24 to yeah. be exact. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Right. <laughs> so you're wanting us to weigh in on the timeline? I wanted to bring... Yeah, if, you, yeah. if anyone has a thought about well, that, sure. What definitely. Sherry just brings up is <clears throat> actually a very valid point because... It doesn't matter if it's on the side of a building or you, you're just basically saying all banners are temporary signs and that they can't be up for a certain amount of time. Right. It doesn't matter what the banner is doing. Right. So her construction would be that they can only be up for so long and, <clears throat> and without being moved. I guess, I, without being, what happens if they just get moved? So if I have a banner uh, on on the top side of the fence and then I move it to the lower part of the fence, does that mean that that is it the banner or is it the placement of the banner? There's all sorts it's of things. It's sort of like parking your car and having to move it in yeah. the right. block, you right. know, move it away from, out of the block. That's I a don't good know. point. We, yeah. I think we'd say move it to a different site. I, this sounds like a great discussion for Lisa Beatty and Mark Gamma to get into <laughs> when uh, you bring it up to them. Okay. I'll watch that for an hour and a half. Right. But um, I don't think we can make a distinction. We could we could talk about banners at construction sites, but we can't talk about the content of right. the banner right. itself. Right. So there, we could make that distinction. Though, Just about excluding it. construction Type so a, signage. A banner at a construction site could be up for a longer time period. Mm, yep. Right, because if you put up a banner, I mean, banners are up, so, uh, you know, the now leasing banners mm -hmm. uh, that get put up, and most of the time they're up there for Ever. years, right. just as advertisement that they're leasing. And it was Michelle and I were driving today, and there was one that was all rotten over and mm. folded over. And if you lived here, you'd be home by now. Those type of banners. Yes. Yeah. So I, I mean, I'm just saying that. Yeah. Yeah. You know that there, there's kind of a lot more thought that. You, that's why you say, well, a definition of a a banner that is meant as, you know, because you have advertising banners which is that would be what that construction company is doing is advertising or the leasing thing would be advertising. Um, so, you know, is a sign advertising for your business? It's just identifying something we can't, or we have to be careful about treading into content and allowing certain kinds of content signs be 
Exactly. You know, or treated or, differently, I guess. So yeah. we'll have to think about how we how we deal. Yeah, with because that. I mean, I, I could see Axelrod throwing one up there and it being up there for a year or two mm -hmm. years, and mm -hmm. their banner might be very very nice and may not ever tear, yep. but it would still technically be a banner. Axel tree. Axel tree. Sorry. Yeah. What did I say? Axelrod. Yeah. It's okay. the Guns and Roses in me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my thought about I think longer than three months is I think important to just thinking about businesses that maybe are trying to design a logo or other things and so it takes a while you know maybe they want to get their business started but don't have all their right you know collateral material in place or colors or designs whatever so three months seems too short okay for sure in my in my opinion for that kind of practical yep. purpose we may come back around to just sticking with this reasonable period of time and not even kidding. I, I, I mean, know. you never know. We'll, I don't know about that. We'll see where we, <laughs> where we land. Okay. Sure, cancel. We'll have an opinion. We want to have, I mean, we want to have an enforceable wanna, something. You, we yeah. don't want discretionary language. Right, right. That's true. Yeah. I mean, you could do, say like six months with a, you could do like some sort an of extension or conditional something. use sort of thing yeah. for them to apply for more time. So that, um, and couldn't you just make that a nuisance thing and then just have it by code enforcement? But they need to have a code to, I mean, they have to have language in the code to enforce, oh, I see. right? I so right. it's that that was kind of part of it. You can't you can't enforce if there isn't a time frame or some some kind of okay. standard. All right, I got you. Right. Right. Yeah. So are there other things that council that discussed, or is that? Those were the, the high points, high point, no, okay. basically. Well, so I, I'm assuming that 19.904 got kicked out, right? Wasn't right. that the big talk with all the wireless people? No. Oh no, that was very different. Um, that was. Oh, that was. That's for a the fee. franchise. Those are the franchise agreements. That was different. No, the only um, thing that came up um, on the 904 was in the table that I needed to edit the table to say new power. A new monopole tower up to 100 feet. That, that, so that it was clear that that's the top. Wouldn't the this height. be kind of one of the things that maybe we should wait on this until after they talk to the wireless companies to find out what the actual technology is? Or is this just for the big, huge ones? No, well, so we have an existing wireless code in already in our code and these edits are intended to make sure that we are complying with FCC regulations. Oh, okay. All right. okay. um, the franchise agreements and I believe what they were talking about more are the small cells. Right. And, and that's, those and this would not affect, this code does not affect Not really, those no. Small cells. Um, okay. we're kind of talking about, you know, other things. And I'm sure when when in, when that gets straightened out we can come back and, and insert some specific language to that effect if we need to. I'll be okay. I'll be working with Reba for on the, that to do for that. For the yeah. um, other commissioners at the council meeting, um, uh, uh, the finance department was suggesting a fee for the small cell technology that that many of the um, uh, providers, the phone providers, are are installing and. Um, there was opposition, and so it's been pushed pushed out. I'm I can't remember what the timeline was, but um, there's some rewriting and some conferencing going on, and it may come back in some form. But the um, there were definitely concerns about the way it was um, written in that uh, at that time. So, but it is it'll. And I'm not sure how many of the, I mean, the, the, a lot of the small cell technology, and I, I'm not familiar with it, but they're smaller units, but they still have some power that drives them and so on. But they can be placed on existing poles in different locations. And our, we require a fee if you're using the right of way. We have a fee if, if somebody's placing something in the right of way. And so that's what that was about. But it's not a land use issue at all. And they, and they, the big thing is, is that they only separate from like 500 feet apart or 500 yards apart or something like that. So if you're going to do this, you'd put a lot in. And so yeah. that, I think that's it. And uh, your coverage is, it's the way they'll be able to deliver the higher, um, the 4G and 5G. 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 Yeah. And not 6G. Not 6G. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Did any of you folks have any questions or needing clarification about any of So I, I have one. Um, 
for chapter 14.16. Um, on it, and I want to clarify that <clears throat> any sign that is below uh, four foot by two foot, right, can be permanently mounted anywhere without a uh, uh, without having to get a signed permit. Correct? Isn't that the way that our rules read? For the exemptions, you mean? Yeah. So uh, I just want to point out that by doing a two foot by two foot historic sign, it would still be exempt from uh, sign code. Yes, it would not require a permit. Right, and so what it would not the, require a permit. Right. The point of this is to have a consistency with a historic sign, so that if somebody wanted to do a historic sign, you didn't have a whole. Uh, you know, hodgepodge of different kind of looking signs that you just kind of had the mm -hmm. same kind of looking sign. Part is of this too, if I could though, is that because we have an exemption for one sign per occupancy or premises not exceeding four square feet and you don't need a permit for that. What this was also able to do was to allow for an additional sign on a property. Oh, okay, all right, all right, um, that's good. Specific to being, you know, an historic, an historic marker type sign so that you could have, that this wouldn't, you, you could have this additional sign because it's an historic. Okay, marker. that makes sense. Yeah. Thank yep. you. Yep. So I just wanted to add, so we're, uh, I, I have it in my notes here, so I'll say, where they say historic site, uh, I think it's D, I have it labeled as D in my notes. 3D. Mm -hmm. 3D. This it exemption be, is limited to A, B, C, D. Right, and a historic site or event recognized and acknowledged by city council or appointed committee or commission. Okay. Uh, uh, what I, uh, I, if, uh, I think that we have a, uh, a committee uh, already that um, that is labeled as design and landmarks that could easily figure out if it's historic or not. I think it's a huge waste of city council's time to, uh, you know, to do this. I would think that they would want to appoint a different committee or commission to be able to do that for them. And then why I say event is because uh, one of the most famous things that ever happened here is JFK sat in that soda fountain. So, you know, does is that a historic event or is that uh, or is the building a historic site because JFK sat, sat there? Right. I think it's just easier just to say historic site and, and or event. Mm -hmm. And then that way, you know. It could be an historic site because of an historic event, though. Right. Right. So. Right. Okay. It, it could be. Yep. But you know, I mean, mm -hmm. the building itself is not a historic site. It's the event that makes it a historic site. So why not just cut it through and just say, yep. you know, an event. Okay. I, I'm struggling with that one a little bit, Greg, because I think a, a site encompasses the event because you can be. A property can be nominated to the National Register for a bunch of different reasons. One's the history, one's the architecture, but the, the history can justify that. So, it, uh, Let's say you wanted to put a, uh, a sign um, out on uh, Elk Rock for the launch, launching of the Lot Whipcomb on December uh, 31st, uh, um, or December 24th, 1850, right? Still, Is that, a, well, that doesn't make Elk Rock a historic site. I think it's, I it think makes it, it an, an event that I happened. I think it would still be the site. I think you're, you're documenting that this occurred. At this site. At this site or near this site. I mean, where else would you put it there, you know? I mean. So the sign would say something like site of, et cetera, you know, some kind of, of language time, like that. that type of thing is actually tied to that location. I, but it, the what, point what, being that an event can be the reason a site is historic. Yep, correct. Yeah, yeah. All I'm trying to do is save a step for whoever has to listen to, you know, if you have to prove that the event is historic and then you have to prove that the site is historic because of the event, uh, I'm just trying to say, that, you know, you could either call it either or. Yeah. That, that's, you know, it's it's, you know. Because somebody could say, well, the building is a 50 years old. Let's say Obama came in and uh, sat at uh, Rice Cookery, right, and you wanted to mark that. Well, somebody would say, well, it can't be a historic site because it's not 50 years old. 
That's true. We'll work, I'll work on some language to make sure that that's clear, that that's okay. something that could qualify a site um, for designation. Okay. But this is, this is qualifying for an exemption. For right? a sign. For a sign. Right. Okay. It just means that they don't have to get a sign permit. Okay. That's all. It's just exempt from the permit process. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Just a little tiny typo. Mm. In 3D, it should be a historic site. Oh, very good. Really? Not in Canada, it's not. Okay. Really? Yeah. Am I wrong? No, I don't right. I, I'm happy to look it up. Uh, I've I mean, always written it that way, I've so I thought I'm, it goes either way, but yeah. that's my okay. old. Um, okay. Old, I will double check English. It. Guy, uh, <laughs> my old guy. Yep. It's been a long time since I took high school. I will, I will we'll, double check we'll, it. We'll <laughs> look at wrong. our official um, planning department. Um, our style, style guide. Yeah. Okay. Which we have. Yeah. Okay. And it probably tells us what to do. Yeah. If not, I'll call Marcia. And, <laughs> and so during during the council meeting, uh, Mayor Gamba brought up a point of um, how how do how do we protect against things that we don't want necessarily be said? And everybody was like, "Oh, we can't battle with First Amendment rights." But what we could do is we could be specific in this language if we wanted to to say, um, you know, the sign must have. Um, uh, the name of the building on it, the date it was built, and an explanation of why it's a historic site or an event. And then if something beyond that gets said, that's that's your First Amendment rights. But that way somebody just can't put up a historic sign and say, well, see, this is historic because it's a 50-year-old building and, you know... You understand we'll, what I mean? We'll need to talk to our city attorney about mm -hmm. how much. I think you can be specific on what the sign says. You just can't say what what somebody can write on the sign. I'm not sure. Because um, Oregon, for example, in Oregon City, they all their signs are pretty well specific. I think the city provides those signs, which is what they do. in... oh, I in, see what you're saying. And like us, we go also. Yeah. So the city produces the signs and holds a... You know, has has their own standard yeah, or whatever. Provides those. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Anyone else have anything based on what we've already discussed with... I have one more, more goofball thing. Okay. One more thing. Uh, in... 19.911.6, mm -hmm. uh, if you're referring to figure 19.304-4 or the subsection 19.304.5.b.3, uh, mm -hmm. shouldn't that also be referred to now the new 19.510? Oh, yes, it should. Yep. Good catch. Very thorough. Thank you. I just came up with that one on the fly, too, kids. <laughs> Someone studied big yeah, time. I'm kidding. Yep. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, what, ab what about anything from you two on um, the green building standards or anything related to, to that discussion? Is there anything that you wanted to add for consideration on that point or any of the other things that were highlighted so far? Contend with the discussion that has occurred. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. I also don't have a whole lot to add. I thought about making some comments about the green building and setbacks, but generally I'm in agreement with those so okay we are um, going to meet with Lauren Loosefeld from the um, DLC who's done some uh, an architect with um, Opsis. Optica. Opsis 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 yeah. Yeah. and um, she's done some green building design and um, so Vera is actually going to be off vacationing but the city manager and I are going to meet with her and have this discussion Great. so um, will um she's provided us with some examples of some things and i've had a very short discussion about it with her um so we're gonna see what she what insight she has um 
and uh, you know, I don't know how much it'll morph, but it's going to definitely be different when it comes back. Excellent. Okay. That's all I have. Nothing. Nothing else jumped out. Um, let me look through here. Made some notes. I may certainly, as you know, as we're kind of putting this together, if if you think of anything, please you know send me an email and or you know give a call or whatever if you have any questions about anything that you have some questions about. As we're of course in the public hearing process, this can this will change. But if there's anything in particular that you want us to to think about, please let us know. And we we have one other aspect of this that we need to talk about internally, and that's some of these are givings. They give people more. But a few of these take something away. Mm, like the and chickens. It's, it's the difference mm -hmm. between what we have to notice everyone about. Mm -hmm. If it's a giving, we don't have to tell them we're giving it. But if it's a takeaway thing, mm -hmm. we have to send out a notice to everybody. Right. And we haven't fully decided yet if these are important enough to pay for, pay for a notice for the takeaways. Mm -hmm. Are there other more important things that we would want to include? Mm. So that is a nice right. step that that uh, we still need to go through. Okay. Yeah. So we are, you said public hearing around mid-November, October. I'm hoping. Oh, October. Yeah, okay. or probably late end of October. I think October 23rd is a okay. one of your hearing dates, and we'll see. Well, it'll be, it'll depend on how well or how this green building discussion goes um, mm -hmm. and see if we can hit those dates based on the notice requirements that we have with DLCD and Metro and okay. so on. So we'll see. It may not be till November. But. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, I did was thinking about the 19.905.9, um, uh, the vacation rentals, mm -hmm. because that, you know, we did have that come up here yes. with us. And so I thought that this reflected a lot of our discussion mm -hmm. at that hearing. Um, and seems to me, I'm pretty satisfied with the way that it, the language is written, but wanted Good. to just flag that for anyone who remembers that hearing. And if you wanted to add anything to what's down. And, and city council didn't talk about this one? Mm -hmm. No, not at all. Mm -mm. It looks fine to me as long as they have that, the minimum information will be the contact information, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. This language was driven from, by that land use decision that you had, so mm -hmm. we kind of pulled from those conditions and, and that discussion just to fill yeah. in here. Right, and we decided rental operator, well, property manager had a specific definition, but rental operator did not, right? Remember how we had that? The, the state of state of Oregon defines property manager oh. as something. Okay. But I think rental operator then uh, described it as could be any or. It could be me. Right, right, right. Could, could be the neighbor. I mean, you're not. Right, right. You're not. Um, you don't have to have a property manager for your. Correct. That's the thing. So, I mean, it says and or. So I think okay. it's fine. No, I think it's good. Anything else? We got the update to the ADUs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's just, that's consistent with state language, the Senate right, bill. Yeah. Right. yeah. And we probably will revisit that again at some point in the, uh, out of the housing work that we're doing. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm going to mention one more thing, and that's 19.401 Willamette Greenway. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We've been talking about carving off um, the, the Willamette Greenway and the natural resources section, um, which were des are designed to exempt a pathway in either one of these areas, like a 12-foot wide pathway. And... Um, we had, we spent an hour on the phone today with the specialist from uh, the Department of Land Conservation and Development, and we're not 100% certain um, we can do this the way we're thinking. So um, you may or may not see that. <laughs> That's right. In the future, we're just we're not sure whether or not we're going to 
move forward with it. it it's in here partly to um, simplify the um, path construction process for Kronberg Park and perhaps widening oh. a couple of the other pathways that, that we have. Um, okay. ODOT now wants 12 foot wide paths. Um, okay. In the natural resource area, we allow a 10 foot wide path to be exempt. So we're, just, we're trying to align the widths with um, what the state funding is for these paths these days. And I see. if you've been on a path with bikes and um, scooters, um, you know, 12 foot probably isn't really wide enough. <laughs> but but um, the exemptions are, are partly written to balance natural resource impacts and providing a, a pathway. So Okay. Yeah, I made a note here just, you know, again, consistent with other cities. It seems like this stuff would be a lot of, I mean, isn't it overall like a, me, um, well, a me state thing? Yeah. Metro well, has their Metro, guidelines. Um, Metro's title um, 13 requirements, natural, the nat their goal five natural resource language included a um, model code and the model code had a 10 foot exemption in it that was written about 10 years ago or so so o odots changed their standard from 10 to 12 apparently right that's what we're okay. understanding yeah. Yeah. and so the exemptions are just are not consistent with what the current state of the art is for these pathways so we are trying to get at that so ODOT standards have changed, but Metro's... Met, metro, it's, it's only in the model code. In the model okay, code, So it doesn't okay. necessarily, it's not a, um, I don't think it is written in specifically into Title 13. The way Metro determined whether or not you were consistent with Title 13 is whether or not you adopted the model code. We pretty mm -hmm. much adopted the model code straight. So Metro will review our to see if we're still consistent. They may challenge us, they may not. We haven't mm -hmm. had the conversation mm -hmm. with Metro about this, but, but that's, I, I don't think they would care. I see, okay. I didn't think, I didn't think DLCD would care either, but. Right. They, if we keep calling her, she yeah. might stop. She will, give, she will give in if we call her again That's tomorrow. But, but the, distingu uh, the distinguishes is that care. ODOT changed their path standards everywhere not in the Willamette Green Zone. They don't care right. about the right. Willamette Right, right, no. Right. This was the, 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 the pathway that they're helping fund in- but, No, I understand. But they're, they're standard for- And really the Willamette, the Willamette Greenway Zone is really about perspective that you see from the river onto the shores, right? No, it's about protecting the area along the river it's not just visual protection, it's environmental protection while also allowing water related uses and recreation. Okay. So right. it's a it's got multiple objectives. Yeah. And um, and there are certain things that you can exempt. You could exempt this, but there's a pro a different process that the state the DLCD would like us to go through that's way more complicated than just adding 12 a 12 foot path as an exemption. Well, there have been other cities along the Willamette that have recently recaptured their riverfront, and so it seems to me that it's, you know, might be interesting to, like, well, I want to say Independence or, like, Albany or a couple of cities have really and, done some of that and lately. And there's ways, there's, there is a, a, a relatively clear way in the goal to do that, it allows you to do it. Mm -hmm. it, it requires um, one to adopt a Willamette River Greenway design plan. We actually, in our code, um, or in our, in our comp plan, we, we, that was written 30 years ago, it says Milwaukee shall develop a Willamette River design plan. We never did. So if, so part of our conversation today was, why don't you guys do this design plan? Well. That's a whole lot. We haven't done one for, for 25 or 30 years. We're going to do one right now to get this 12-foot wide path. No, <laughs> probably not. So um, 
um, we've done a, a, a lot of planning along the, the river, Milwaukee Bay Park, Kronberg Park, the, the work and the sewage treatment plant that together all probably would equate to something like a Willamette River design plan, but it would, it would take um, more effort than it's worth to us to put all that together and package it and get it approved as a design plan in the short term. Right. Um, so uh, all we were really trying to do is avoid the hearing process for the Kronberg path trail so that they could go through the permitting pro they could get a permit to do the trail without having to go to a hearing and it's sounding like we're probably going to do that so you'll probably see that as an application yeah. okay I'll be if that makes sense. Yeah, oh, you don't have that. to go somewhere to go testify. You have to come to the planning commission for the application. Well, I'm, I'm you made it sound like that you had to go somewhere else in the state to go, like down to Salem or something, to go ask for your Willamette Greenway oh. expansion path. Uh, no, no. Um, the hearing, it's just a planning commission hearing. Okay. You right. know, it, it, we, but we, we thought that it, um, it made sense to try to streamline this particular type of improvement because there's other places where we might want to do it and the design plan gets you know requires a couple of other state agencies approval as well oh, and, that, I, have, oh, I see. and oh, I have no idea what that review process oh, oh, looks like and, and so. LCDC both have to approve your design plan yeah. which is like complicated I don't, I don't know that's what that not means. the Department of Land Conservation and Development that's the, the the commission so it requires a commission meeting to, to to approve it so we just thought that sounded like way too much work I can see that well thanks for the explanation on that um, more than you really wanted but no that was good anybody else on anything related to the hot topic of livestock or um, can we talk Stop. about the number of chickens some more? Do we want to talk about that? <laughs> you get to talk about that again in the yeah. future. Yeah, we'll save it. But we'll have, we'll, save have it. More, yeah. we'll have more information for it. You know, just like, you know, I we'll did just reach look out. forward to that. Yeah. I did reach out to somebody who had chickens, and they said, you know, six or seven is fine. If you have any more than that, you're just kind of Seems like. overdoing your eggs. Well, a big fan. I mean, I can. Uh, there's large. There are large families out mm -hmm. there. So, but, but I was joking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, you're gonna need cholesterol drugs. Is what you're gonna need. With I would really like to just see examples from other cities. Got it. Yep. Okay. So, you know, data from what else is happening out there, but. so that it's not, you know. A subjective mm -hmm. thing about how many eggs per family do you get, you know? I guess, and also to really drive this in, <laughs> does this, is this like, does it include farms? So that's that's handled differently. That's considered okay. an agricultural use, okay. and we define that. We have minimum um, lot size requirements okay. for that's what I was wondering. raising of livestock and that sort of thing. It's different. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that gets it's, into the whole livestock so, covering. Right. But we'll you just, can have a cow. Okay. If you want a cow, on any size lot, right? You can have yeah. one. It's a pet. Yeah. Right, as a pet. You're not using it for commercial purposes, so yeah. But you can milk it yourself, just like the sure. chickens. Good mm -hmm. to know. Yep. Just to let you know. Nothing okay. Um, all right. I have a cow, a horse, well, I and think twenty chickens. I think that we, unless anyone has any further questions or clarifications or comments, I think. I think we feel pretty. I feel pretty educated on this, um, this this room service package here. So, we good? Okay. Well, thank you for that. Um, so, um, the next item is other business or updates. Do commissioners or staff have other business? I gave our update. You gave your already. update. Mm -hmm. Other commissioners have updates. Okay. Um, and then f um, do planning commissioners have other items for discussion? Nope. Um, forecast for future meetings. So September 11th is canceled and we have a hearing um, on, a, on a, an apartment building out on Harmony Road that needs some variances and a natural resource um, impact uh, question. 
Is that the one that's uh, next to uh, the public storage? It's um, next to the existing apartment. Right, right, right. But the, the empty South lot in between the dentist area. and that? Yeah. It's okay. actually closer to the Harmony intersection. It's on the other side of the apartment building, away from the right. storage. Right, in between yeah. the dentist and the apartment building. Yeah. Is that Ed? Might be. I don't know. I can't remember. And his last name's just escaping me for the moment. All right. The applicant is. Well, I will um, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. So okay. Uh, I had a motion, had a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, okay. Meeting is adjourned.